What's up guys and welcome to central Kadikoy on the Asian side of Istanbul. Today I'm standing in Bahadia which is the neighborhood that I live in. An amazing, beautiful, vibrant part of Istanbul you definitely have to visit if you ever come here. Today we are going to learn a little bit about Turkish cuisine, a little bit about Turkish history, but more importantly show you two amazing, amazing things made out of beef that you can find in this delicious food city. If that sounds interesting, come along. In central Bahadia, we know we're here because of the bull statue. So this is a charging bull. You can see, we've even got some, you know, it's anatomically correct. And so here we are. You can see it's a really, really busy area. If we go this way, you can see the coastline. That's where you take the ferries over to the European side. But we're going this way. We're going this way into the Asian side to see what delicious food we can find along the way. <laughs> It's a Saturday here in Moda, so we're gonna have to do some dodging. We're gonna have to do some dodging, woo! But I wanna start first about these kind of impressions we get when we're thinking about Turkey. Oftentimes, I think when people think about Turkey, they kind of get this very like Muslim kind of picture in their head where there's mosques, there's people praying a lot, there's the call to prayer, but uh, there's such a mishmash of things going on here. And especially the area that I'm in, Bahadia, it's like extremely, hipster. It's extremely modern. There's cool little shops, cool little cafes, a lot of influence from Germany because a lot of Turks move to Germany and then they come back home, open cafes and restaurants. And it's probably just not what you're expecting. You know, are you expecting to see girls in very typical Western clothes with neck tattoos, um, you know, hanging out at bars? Uh, some people don't expect that, but that is how life here in Istanbul is. Uh, the complexity comes where it's a really old society and you get lots of you know, conservative values in people, and you also get that very Islamic conservative feeling here too. Um, so you kind of have this, especially in Istanbul and especially in Kadikoy, which is the center of this kind of Western ideology here in Turkey, um, you get a really big mishmash, and it's a really beautiful thing. So uh, as we walk through the streets, we are, we are on our way to our first destination. If I was to give Istanbul a word to describe what it's like being here, what it's like experiencing the city, what it's like understanding its history, my word would be complex. There's so many things, there's so many nuances here that, that challenge each other, and it's so, not, um, it's so not simple to understand these things. You know, even being here and knowing the history and having a family connection to Turkey, there's still things, you know, walking around that definitely are, uh, you know, are different than what I expected or especially a bit surprising, a bit shocking. So, um, when you do come to Turkey, it's best to do a little, do a little reading, do a little, do a little historical background, do a little, learn a little things. So you're able to, uh, to really get the, the full experience that you're, uh, that you're looking for, that you're looking for. Our first delicious meaty item that we'll find on the streets of Kadi Koy is the notorious Ja Kebab. The perfect crossover between rotisserie and donor machine, the Ja Kebab roasts over an open fire until tender perfection. The meat, lamb in this case, is stacked upon itself with fat interlaced for a juicy, tender, delicious end result. This dish goes back to 18th century Ottoman Empire, in which the word jaw is a crossover between something you get from Armenian or Georgian, meaning a big stick that you use to rotate. The little vessels here you see are called biko, the perfect vessel to get this into your face. So I just sat down at Altin Ja Kebab restaurant. Um, ja kebab is something very interesting, very regional um, for Turkey. I've actually never seen it before um, until I watched some YouTube videos um, from other people who have had it. Uh, so essentially they, they create a wood fire under, you know, like a kind of a fireplace wood fire. Then instead of doing the duner meat, the typical donor kebab where it's upright and it spins, 
um, using this kind of offset heat, what they do is they, they use the, the, uh, the like a rotisserie. So instead of uh, the duner spinning like this, you have it almost like uh, you know roasting on itself, spinning like this in a uh, you know reminds me of like lechon or um, I guess even rotisserie chicken. But they they stack the meat on itself, layering it with fat. And then the, what's the, the interesting thing that the, uh, the chef does is he, instead of you know, cutting it off into the strips and letting it fall down, obviously it would fall onto the fire. So what he does is he skewers the, uh, the meat and then cuts it off the skewer and then grills it separately. Um, typically the donor meat, you cut it off and then they, they kind of put it on the, on, the flat, on, the, on the flat top for you. So this one, it's kind of the same idea, different, uh, different kind of mindset. So this food comes from Gaziantep, which is known as the home of Turkish cuisine. Everybody I talk to says, you have to go to Antep. The food there is amazing. We will be going there in about a month. Very excited. But for now, uh, we got the Ja Kebab. I'm not sure what Ja means, to be honest. It's C, A, and G. In Turkish, the C makes a J sound, and the G, if it has a little dash on top, actually makes no sound at all. It just elongates the, uh, the vowel. So some people say Kag Kebab. Don't do that. Don't, uh, don't fall into those traps. You're better than that. And uh, now you've learned. Tales from the Road, um, we're here to teach. We're here to uh, show you guys the word. And we are here to make you travel a little bit more easily. So um, we're waiting for the accoutrement. There we go. Beautiful. Um, so we've got some green peppers. We've got, oh yeah. Here we go. Altinja. If you're ever in Istanbul, Altınca, this is your spot. Very local, everyone's very friendly. Teşekkürler. The Ja kebab has arrived. We've got the tomatoes, onions, little parsley. We've got these green peppers. These can actually be really spicy. They can sometimes be not spicy at all. It really depends on the day that you get them. Um, so beware, beware. These are called biber in Turkish, domates, and Oh, I know this one. It starts with an S. If you know it in Turkish, drop me a message. Also, if you like the food videos, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Make sure to like the video if you enjoy it thus far. So, let's talk jaw kebab. I've always wanted to do this pose. Super, super delicious. So, you can see, so they, they skewer it with this kind of flat skewer here from the big rotating thing. You then get... Uh, these nice interlayers of fat, you get the nice juice. This is a beef, um, you know, in Turkey, you're not gonna find pork, you're just not gonna find it. So everything's pretty much with beef, and it just smells amazing, honestly. They serve everything with lavash bread. So uh, this is a thin bread, it comes from the Middle East. This is really, really popular all over the place, but uh, I think the originators of it are the Iranians. Don't quote me on that, I don't wanna get anyone in a political argument. Um, but what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your, you're gonna take your lavash, just like this. I think you're gonna take your skewer and you're gonna grab, let's just grab some meat. All right, we've got, let's say half the meat here. We've got it in the lavash. We've got a tomato, let's go tomato. Let's go a little onion and a little parsley. And let's give it a wrap. And you have a nice little, you know, it's funny, like Turkish food and Mexican food is super similar in many ways. And so, you know, this is, a, just think of this as a Turkish burrito. So uh, let's give it a try. Mmm. Oh yeah. So in this case, this is actually lamb. It might be a mixture of between lamb and beef, but it's so tender. I want to show you guys. It's really, really beautifully grilled. It's so aromatic smelling, but also so meaty smelling. Mmm. Oh my god. That is delicious. Sometimes what I don't like about the uh, the donor meat is it's it's very dry, and sometimes they pack it together. There's many different ways of making it, but this one they really took care to, you know, put the different slices of meat um, interlayered with the fat, and they actually take it off the heat. That's the nice part. It doesn't sit there with all the fat dripping. It just it just sits in one big hunk. They, uh, and then they heat it up on the on the wood when they need it. So you can really taste you can really taste the the wood fire. It really tastes like a nice grilled piece of uh, piece of meat. Really beautiful. Mmm. 
Oh my god. So because the owners here are so absolutely lovely, they have treated me to a cup of uh, Café Turkish, also known as Turkish coffee. I know, I'm sure you guys could have gotten that, but that's what it is. Um, I'm gonna do a video where I actually show you how to make Turkish coffee. Uh, I actually worked in a Turkish restaurant. Shout out Anatolia Cafe in, uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mehmet, I hope you're watching. Um, anyways, Turkish coffee, um, also like Arabic coffee, uh, starts with very finely ground beans. Um, I'm not sure exactly the roast. This could be an Arabica. It could be something else, uh, but it's quite strong. And essentially what they do is they take something called a jezbe, which I'll put a picture right now. And a jezbe is an instrument that essentially, eh, think of it as a small pot. So you put in your, you put in your Turkish coffee, just literally the, the, the grounds. You add the uh, exact amount of water that, you, uh, that your cup holds. So the best way to measure it is you take your cup, you fill it up with water, and that's what you put into the jezbe. From there, you bring it up to a small boil until the bubbles start to appear. You take it off the uh, you take it off the fire. You give it a little tap. And you put it back on, and you let it go to full bubble. Once it's full bubble, you give it the full bubble. Once it's boiling, um, but not crazy. You're getting a nice. The the point is, you want to get this nice layer of foam on the top. Um, think of it like a crema or some sort of. You know, like the top, like a cappuccino. Like you want it to be nice and smooth. Um, sometimes the really good guys can do uh, proper Turkish coffee art, where they, they do something like pretty epic. Um, you know, like uh, like the frappuccino guys. And uh, from there, you can either add sugar. You can actually add it in before or after uh, your choice. I'm a I'm a black coffee kind of guy myself. So Sherefe, uh, that means cheers in Turkish. Afiyet olsun. Thank you, everybody at Altin. Ja Kebab, thank you for having me. It's been delightful. If you're in Istanbul, in Bahadia, come to Altin Ja Kebab. I was not paid for this promotion. Ah, delicious. If you haven't had Turkish coffee, it's rich, it's thick, it's really full-bodied, it's almost chocolatey. Um, it's bitter, but it's not too bitter. And the, since the grounds are in there, it's not filtered. Uh, you can actually taste the, uh, you get a little bit of the grounds when you drink and you'll see at the bottom there's, a, there's actually a thick layer of coffee grounds when you get down there, which I'll show you when I finish this cup. Um, there's an ancient myth in Turkish coffee drinking culture uh, in which the, just like the Chinese or the Japanese read tea leaves, uh, so, do, so too do the Turkish read the, uh, the bottom of the Turkish coffee cups. So. Um, uh, it's supposed to, you know, talk about your fate, your fortune, what will happen next year, your love life, all of these things. Uh, there's actually professional coffee, uh, coffee fortune readers here in Turkey. So maybe, uh, maybe they'll find one. Maybe we'll see what my fortune is. That was absolutely freaking delicious. That being said, it was only the first course in this little food journey that we're going on today. So next up is the late night snack of turkey, the proper, let's call it late night drunk food of Istanbul. When you're going out, you, uh, you get the Islak hamburger. So Islak means wet, hamburger means hamburger. So it's a wet hamburger. These are mini sliders. You can find them all over the city. They're really famous from this one spot that I'm gonna take you to next. And we are going to sample one. to our next destination. This is Kizil Kayalar. This is a very famous late night street food stall. The first one opened in Taksim Square. They were serving Islak hamburger, wet hamburgers. Uh, they opened one, it's kind of like a chain now, um, but it's the quintessential fast food that you need to get in Istanbul, late night, it's what people need. They've got Duner Kebab, they've got Islak hamburger. They have pretty much everything you could want. Uh, apparently one is gonna be like less than less than a dollar. So it's one of those things you stand, you know, you eat one, you've had a few beers, you eat another, you have a few more beers, you eat another. Um, or you just have like 10, I don't know. It depends, they're like slider size. So let's go check it out.
Hoş geldiniz. 14 lira efendim. İki hamburger bir şey yiyeceğim. Evet arkadaşlar bekleyin bakalım seni gidebiliriz. Buyurun. All right, that place is wild. So much stuff going on. I'm sure you guys saw. I've got the Islak hamburger. It's first impressions. It's really, really, really hot. They said this is like the, uh, if there was like, you know, like the beef dip au jus of, uh, of burgers, this would be it. So uh, it looks awesome. The bread is all doughy. It's kind of squishy. Uh, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to give you my, my hot take. But it is really, it's burning through my hands, through the paper. I need to find a place to sit. I need to find a place to sit. Oh, this will do. All right, so I'm standing just, you know, in a random square, filming in public. It's great. I feel, uh, feel good about this. So. This is the Islak hamburger, look at it. We've got the interior, we've got a nice kind of like spiced piece of meat. We've got this kind of, it's kind of like steamed in a, in a tomato sauce. This is the famous one, it's small. We're gonna, we're gonna give it a bite. It was only six lira, which is like, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, 85 cents? Uh, let's go for it. Holy shit. It's savory, it's sweet. It's meaty. There's uh, there's no cheese in here. You can guys can see. It's like uh, it's spiced. Wow. I have to say, if you need a late night food in your life, that's gonna definitely be the one. It's pretty much everything you want it, that you could possibly want in a hamburger. It's it's pretty simple. It's like I don't know. Sometimes in life, the simple things are sometimes the best. And god damn it, this one's pretty good. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god. So the original big bar streets here in Turkey were in Taksim Square, uh, which is on the European side. So this, this chain popped up. Uh, it said something like 30 or 40 years ago. I wasn't exactly sure. Now they've kind of taken over. And I can see why. This is... It's, it's killer. It's absolutely killer. I'm surprised. I'm not really a big fast food guy, but... You know, you can get a donor kebab for like seven lira that's one dollar you can get this for six lira that's like 80 cents Woo. it's really hard not to get fat in turkey guys really hard not to get fat to end this meaty mission we're on right now i was just walking and i found something i always wanted to try here in turkey we've seen these i've seen these are called kibbe um in turkey they call them ichle kufte kufte is normally like a meatball kind of like the meat that was just inside that islak hamburger um, but uh, this is basically, they, they put some kind of batter on the outside. I'm pretty sure it's semolina flour and it may be adding a little bit of corn flour. Um, I'm not sure at this point. I will let you guys know. But what this should be is it should be nice and stuffed. So when we crack it open, we can see the beautiful spiced meat inside, the nice, actually on the outside, it looks like lentils. So they, they, they, fry, they take it in lentils, they roll it, they fry it. And yeah, it smells nice and uh, nice and meaty, nice and tasty. So we're gonna give it a try. We are going to tell you about each le kufte. Let's give it a shot. Mmm. That's very different. Well, I thought it was more like Quebec. Quebec comes from Lebanon. And the cool part about this, this part of the world is you get food from all over the place making an appearance, um, you know, in one country and another country. And there's a little bit of difference between what you find. And so I believe Quebec, I don't think it's, I don't think it's rolled in uh, lentils. And so this one, the outside you can see is really, um, it's hard, you know, it's, um, it's been fried before, so it's not, it's not completely fresh, but the flavors there, the kufta, it's flavored with, with onions, uh, with like caramelized onions, with um, with garlic, uh, with cumin, and uh, it's it's ground beef. So it's it's really nice. It's really really tasty. And then the outside, it's hard. It doesn't have so much flavor. It, it provides more of a texture. And lentils are so much more dense than flour. 
So I think they hold their they hold their form, and you know they give a little uh, a little you know give a little way to uh, some pressure. So this is Ich Le Kufte, and uh, thank you guys for joining me on today's mission. Mm. Before I go, I just want to tell you guys a little bit about the Ottoman Empire and the uh, the excellent food history that uh, that the empire has. So the Ottomans ruled North Africa. They ruled almost you know, half of Europe, basically up until Romania. Uh, they ruled uh, lots of the Middle East, including Israel, including, you know, including Egypt, including parts of Saudi Arabia, including parts of Yemen and modern day Oman. This is cool. This is cool for food. If you like food history, you should like this because a lot of the things that were great from the Turkish cuisine got transported to the Middle East. It got transported all over the place. I've talked about it being, you know, the epicenter of trade uh, many times now. But what's cool is you find all these variations of these dishes that people were eating, um, you know, all over the Ottoman Empire. So, uh, for example, Bosnians, they, uh, a lot of them moved, uh, a lot of Turks moved to Bosnia when it was under the Ottoman Empire, uh, stayed for a couple hundred years, left their imprint on the culture, and then after that, they moved back to Turkey. And so now you have these uh, amazing Bosnian restaurants. I would love to tour one um, here in Istanbul and around the country. You have amazing Serbian restaurants, you have amazing Egyptian restaurants. And while they're Egyptian, while they're Bosnian, they're actually Turkish at the soul, at the root, uh, with the history. So I find that super interesting, uh, and it makes the food just so damn delicious. If you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. More cool food content, culture content, some political content as well coming soon. We are down to our last week or so in Istanbul. We're going to go to Edirne next, which is an amazing Ottoman city, so make sure to stay tuned for when that video comes out. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. Cheers to you, Sherefe, and Goro Shuruz. See you later. Mm. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya. Ya.